Hello, one and all. Welcome to CFUR 88.7 FM. It just so happens that on the other side of the line, I've got David Lovering of the Pixies. Anyone who's ever heard of the Pixies is excited to know that the Pixies are touring again with a new album. Anyone who hasn't heard of the Pixies is about to be excited about their new tour. The whole world shakes a little harder when this band decides to traverse it. With Barcelona's Primavera Sound Festival in sight at the end of May, as well as Sydney, Australia's Opera House a little before that, and of course, Edmonton, Calgary, Saskatoon, and Winnipeg, Canada, come October. The colossal wave of noise that is the Pixies has the entire world to see in trash. Unbelievably enough, the reason I'm giving this odd preamble is because the great David Lovering, the long-standing drummer for the Pixies, is giving little old CFURFM a sweet, sweet interview. I only have about seven minutes with him, so I better stop yakking and ask oh. the questions already. Welcome to the Prince George Airwaves. Has the band ever been on a tour quite this massive before? Um, no, I think, you know, people say that we're huge. I mean, it doesn't seem that we're as big and massive or that we're doing things. But, um, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's so exciting. I love doing it, so I can't complain in any way. Yeah, yeah. How long have you guys uh, been on tour? It started in January 2014, no? Yeah, I think so. Uh, actually, we did some shows in September, around there, September, up until, I think, November, then we oh, wow. again in January, but it's been broken up, there's been, I think, three little separate tours now that I've had a couple of weeks, or up to a month in between. Okay, where are you guys right now? Uh, right now we're at home, and I'm leaving in about uh, exactly less than a week for Sydney, Australia, for four nights at the Opera House there, and then we're off to Europe for a European festival tour. Incredible. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> You guys are even touching on Asia, right? Uh, yeah, we're actually doing the summer, the summer, the uh, summer Sonic uh, festival in Japan, and uh, we might possibly, I think, in the new year as well for Asia, the rest of Asia. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I could be wrong, but I get the impression that most of the current generation of young adults and teens knows of your band through the Fight Club soundtrack, and I guess as of recent month or two, an iPhone commercial. You know, statements like. The inspiration for Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit may not resonate with a lot of kids these days. Kurt Cobain lingers all their vocabulary, but his legacy isn't really behind their ears right now it's in the uh, MP3 generation. But that said, millions of people know who the Pixies are. Your music doesn't arrive as a stranger. What age range do your recent audiences consist of? I'm curious. Oh, it's been amazing. You know what's amazing, Ian? It's back in 2004. When we got back together, um, I didn't know what had changed. I thought, oh, we're just doing another, we're back together. But it, it, it had gone to another level. And when we did the Coachella Festival in 2004, that was the first time that I saw anything where I saw a mass of kids that weren't even born when we were initially a band back in the day. And they were singing along to every single song. That is so and now, cool. If we, and if we fast forward now, Ian, now to 2014, this is 10 years later. Yeah. We just did Coachella again, and it's not only Coachella, but it's every show in between the last 10 years. It's an, it's an age range from very young, who are just, you know, kids, teenagers, to people my age, wishing that we were playing a seated theater <laughs> instead of a standing room place, you know, just the age, the age difference there. But, um, but it's, it's, it's amazing. And now 10 years later, it's still young, 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 young kids who are young, now 10 years younger than the youngest kids that were there back in 2004. It's, it's just, it just keeps staying young and, and my age old, <laughs> everything in between. So it's, it's, we've been a very fortunate band to have such a, a, a diversity of the age group of the crowd. That is incredible. That's really something to be proud of, too, that you can still you know, gather in that young, young age range after all yeah, these yeah. years. You're, just, yeah, you're I, still connecting. That's so cool. Yeah, I would have never, ever known or ever, ever thought this. And what, what's interesting, Ian, is, you know, the shows nowadays consist of a lot of parents or dads or moms or both bringing their kids to the show. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. <laughs> it's like, wow, it's, it's, it's gone these generations. So it's something else. That's awesome. I understand you've got quite a diverse range of homemade machinery and other gadgets you use during your magic performances. Have you created any such gadgets to append or modify your drum kit? Oh, interesting. Uh, the only thing Ian, that I have is I have, um, I'll just say I came up with something, uh, it's more of a little joke. I, I haven't played it in the band yet, but I'll just say it involves my drum throne 
or they call the drum dome, but a drum stool. And it can, it can, uh, I'll just say it, it can create some some serious damage and things like that. But uh, cool. yeah, one thing I get in that, I, I haven't played it in effect yet, but it, it, it's a nice little adventure. I'll be watching, man. Um, who are some of your favorite drummers? Just to get an idea. Uh, I think anyone who played with Steely Dan. <laughs> oh, Steely Dan is amazing. Yeah, I think they're all accomplished drummers. You know, of course, um, John Bonham, Neil Peart. You know, there's loads of people. Uh, I think um, it's definitely all the influential ones were when I was much younger. Uh, I think that's kind of just what what stuck in me the most. I don't think nothing nowadays can influence me, but yeah. a lot of these old old, old bands and old drummers really uh, they do the trick. Awesome. I heard you're a fan of Rush. Have you ever seen Neil Peart live before? Oh yes, yes. I mean, I've seen Rush many, many times. Yeah, uh, from cool. Rush. Yep. Signal, I think. Oh gosh, back in the uh, late seventies on. Yeah. That is amazing. Um, I think our time is just about up. Do you think I could bother you for a station ID? Sure, no, no, no worries, Ian. We're uh, CFURFM in Prince George, BC. Got it. CFURFM. Got it. That's All right. Do I say your name, Ian? Or um, no, nah, you don't have to. Okay. Right. Here we go. Hi, this is David Lovering of the Pixies, and you're listening to KFURFM, Prince George, British Columbia. Oh, it's uh, it's CFUR actually. Oh, oh, <laughs> Sorry, oh, man. Oh, oh, what did I say? KF. Oh. Yeah, KF. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I don't know. What I was reading another. Okay, okay, get it. Okay. Oh, sorry, Hi, man. Is, okay. Hi, this is David Lovering of the Pixies, and you're listening to CFUR FM, Prince George, BC. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for continuing per- to pursue your passion. I mean, through doing that, you've brought us excellent music, great times, awareness, crazy dance parties, and just plain old general happiness. I hope you guys all have an incredible time together on this tour and uh, enjoy the whole thing as much as you can. See if you are, which is you. You know, all the best luck on your journey. Uh, right on you, man. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, man. It was a pleasure speaking with you. You bet. If all of your North American tour dates gets canceled by some freak solar flare, uh, we'll take you in Prince George, B.C. anytime. No reservations needed. You can just show up. I got an air mattress if you guys need one. <laughs> For sure. Right on, Ian. Right you betcha. Uh, thank you, man. Absolutely. You have yourself a great day. And, uh, to see you up there, right? man. Take care, right? Absolutely. Keep on rocking right. in the free world. <laughs> Bye-bye, Ian. So long.